what's up everyone matt here so one of my patrons was asked, asking me how to change the looping with actions uh like system so that instead of it just going through the whole list and doing like to completion how can we stop in the middle and like inter intersperse some data uh on each of the things that it's creating so i'm going to go over that now so i've got the uh, looping with action sample app open. I'll put links around so that you can get it. Um, okay, so just a run through of how this works again, right? So we've got orders, orders have order details, uh, order details have fulfillments, okay? Um, so on the orders table, right, we have the related order details, the master thing of um, things to be created. We have the created products, right? which comes out of the orders that we did. Um, and then we have the remaining products that we need to do, uh, which takes the products and it subtracts out the created products. Okay, so with that in mind, um, the the system, the, the change that we need to do uh, doesn't really have anything to do with uh, the how the system keeps track of these things that still need to be done like this. So the remaining products, um, this isn't going to change. The thing that we need to change is the action system that we use. So if we go over to behaviors and we look at the, uh, this orders table, we can see the loops. Uh, we can see all the different actions that we got. Um, and so we've got, here's the one that executes the loop, right? Uh, it's not the one I want. Where's the one I want? It's the sequence. Yeah, the save. Here we go. So um, when you save the order, so if we're inside here and we say, I'm going to do X, Y, Z products, right? Um, when I save that, it goes through and you can see it executed that loop right there. There's seven things that it, need, it needed to do and it did them. Um, so the thing we need to do is instead of having the loop loop through and um, when it executes, so if we just go through and just go through them all, so execute is loop, create order details, create order details. Uh, so new first order, repeat, and then this one. So instead of doing this loop right here, where we create the order details and then loop through the repeater and create more and all this, this is the one that we gotta um, change. This is the one that we don't want it to fire off. Well, instead of this, what we, uh, what we wanna do is we want to take that list of remaining products and and we want to use that um, as one of the values that we use uh, inside a link to form. So we say link to form, whatever the form is, and then we say product, and then we index out that thing into the thing. So what we're doing is we're taking the loop that happened automatically and we're instead making it a manual physical process you know what i mean um because like the the loop actions that's happening right now is it does this thing where it creates the order but this is creating the record in the background we instead want to bring that to the foreground and so what we need to do then is instead of dropping this order detail product instead of dropping this index one here we need to instead take that. In fact, I'm going to come in here and take it and copy that. Um, and what I'll do is I'm just going to copy this one uh, and I'm going to say new first order detail. Let's say manual. Okay. Um, and so what I'll do here is I'm going to change this action from add a new row to another table to go to another view within this app. So that's where I want to go. And so what it's going to be inside here is link to uh, form. I don't know the name of the form, um, but what I need to do is I need to prefill inside my order detail. I need this order product to be that, right? Because we got the remaining products here. Yep. So this is going to pull out the first product that we need to do, populate that in the product detail, 
Um, let's see, what else did I need? I probably need to also populate the order link. So I need order link. And the order link is going to be this order ID. The order product detail is the first of the products that needs to be done. Okay, now I need to go grab the name of the form that we're supposed to go to. So what I want to do is I want to go inside one of these forms, right? So like the system, when I save from here and this is different, the system goes through and does that loop. I need to go to this form right here. We're going to have to clean this up. So here's the form and I'm going to come down here and copy the name. Go back to my action that I'm working on and close that. Close that, close that. I need that one. It's this one, first order. Here we go, okay. So we go to the order detail form. The order link is this order, right? Cause this lives on the order table. So it's this order. The product is the first product that needs to be done. Okay, so that's gonna launch us into, yep, and is not blank remaining products, cool. Um, so that's going to launch us into this form, right? Which means we got to clean this up. Um, well, this isn't set up to, there's no data to create here. So it's really just going to be like a pass through form, meaning you're going to go to the form and just hit save. Uh, and then it's going to do the, do the loop. Um, but I think if you're, if you're savvy in app sheet, then you might've already picked up. We've got to do something different. Um, so right now this action here on new first order manual right so this lives on the orders table so when we save the order when we go let me show you in the in the, in the app so when I'm here on the order and I'm inside here and I select a different you know another product or whatever then it's gonna go through and create the thing and so i want this to launch into that into here right um and so let's see what with this and that already pre-populated okay so the so that's from the order we're going to the order details to the child but then after that we're on the child table we're on the order details. And so the the action to create the next thing over on the, that's not gonna work because we're not on that table anymore. We're on the details table. And so we're actually, we actually, we have to create a whole new system to support this. That's kind of a copy of every everything that we're doing here. Um, so let's see, if I go to my order details, See, we don't have anything down here. So what I need is, I need a save action on my order details. Save order detail. And so this is just a, it's a sequence. Okay, don't show it, make it a disk. Okay, so this now needs to go on this form so when you save the order details form it will execute the save order detail action that i just made now inside this action uh let's see we have new order detail fulfillment right so that's creating the child record it's creating the grandchild record the child record to the details if you will um, but what we need is we need to say launch back into the form if the parent record still has stuff that needs to be done. Um, and so what I'll do here is I'll just come down here to uh, this manual one that I created. I'll copy that, move it to the details table, and change this to next order detail manual okay we need to go to the same place but we got to change some of these details right 
So the order ID is now going to be the order link. So I'll copy that and put that there. And then we, instead of uh, this just by itself, what we have to do is since we've changed uh, our reference point, if you will, we're on the child table, we need to look through this reference to dereference the virtual list that lives on the parent level. So all you have to do is copy this and put it in front here as a dereference. Done. So um, it's the exact same action, right? All we did is we've realigned so that the data points are where they're supposed to be. So what was the order ID is now the order link because that's the same piece of data, right? In the, in the corresponding records that are connected to each other. Um, and the order product detail is, so we used to be living up on the parent level, which had the remaining list on it just there, right? So we could just call it as a column. But now that we're on the child table, we have to look through the reference to see that, to get that value. You follow what I'm saying? Okay, so now that we've got this next order detail, what, I, uh, what we need to do one last thing. I need to come in here and pull out this index formula and use that here yes oh there oh never mind we can just make it's even easier just put the dereference part in there done so as long as there's still stuff to do this will fire off so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take this and i'm going to put it into the save event for the order details so when you save the order detail record right so here, here I am, let's start up here. So I'm on an order, I'm on an order detail. So when I save this order detail, if there are more things to be created, it will launch back into another one. And then, right, so on and so on and so on. So uh, that will do that. All I need to do now is change the, I need to add this into my, there so when I save the order it creates the first manual thing yep this is breaking some of the other functionality of this app but I'm just doing this as a demonstration for you I'm not gonna leave this live on this app um, waiting okay so now if I come inside here to this this one that doesn't have any products and I say I want to create these two products look at that without anything it dropped me into the product uh, the order details form as soon as I hit the save button bam, I was launched right into this next form it says what do you want to do with this order detail and you can see the order link is as it should be and the product is the first thing that I selected so now would be your time so like if i was doing this for real i would clean this form up so that it didn't have any of this stuff that you see on here. all of the fields on here i wouldn't have i would have like a display thing up at the top that's a show that that has like the order and then like the product but uh, and then i'd have like a field that was like the number like how many of whatever and then of anything else that you might need below it so that when you launched into this form it dropped you into the field to type in a number, right? So with a, a label above it that says, you know, how many for product number one? See what I'm saying? And you'd show that so that you drop right into it and you can immediately type in a number and your data collection is as fast as possible. So now that I uh, have this, when I hit save, you see how it automatically it's kind of hard to tell there's no animation that happens but product two I'm now in another product uh, order detail form with product number two and then when I hit I'm done so because I selected product one and product two and then it manually ran me through that process so to recap how I did that right the only things that I changed were some of the actions um, on the order table, what I did is I copied the new first order detail uh, and changed that to a manual one where we're going to another view within the app. We're going to order detail form where the order link 
is the order ID and the order detail product is the first product that needs to be made. And then I, with the same condition of it only runs when there's still stuff to be made, I put that inside the save for the, the save order action. Instead of doing the loop, now it does that. Uh, now, obviously doing it this way, it's gonna skip over these other ones if this one ever, if this fires off. So just something to keep in mind. Um, now on the child table, I created a save action, one of these execute a sequence of actions. And I put that onto the form save event for the order detail form down here on the event actions in the form save. So when that, when you save this form, it fires off this action and this action executes anything you put inside here. So it executes this new next order detail manual, which is a copy of that other one that we made, which is the link to form with the appropriate items modified so that they work. And with that, you've changed your looping with actions to now allow you to manually go through each order detail so that you can ask for um, uh, so you can ask for details to be created now you could get really fancy with this if you wanted to where you could have it to if you if you had things where some needed data collection and some didn't you'd have to have two lists right because then you would have two lists to process one for the uh, action looping where it would create everything in the background because you know we don't need to collect any data for these but these over here we do need people to you know answer some questions or whatever so you could have both of these running just know that you'd have to have those two lists actually manually separated out um, by themselves uh, and then you just have to have a combination of these things where um, in the, the order save Instead of executing it like this, I would come inside here and say, uh, do the execute the loop. I would put the loop first. That way, when you save the order, it runs the loop. And then as soon as that's done, then it'll go to whatever the first manual one is, launch you into that. And that, you see what I'm saying? So hope it helps everybody. Let me know if you got any questions. And if you ever have any, uh, like, like, I want to know how to do these things. Let me know.